Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about explaining nonlinearity and how this used to be really hard. It's a lot easier now. It still has some challenges. This is an answer to a question I got on the channel by Mr. Lars Koch01, who asks, you mentioned forced linearity as mistake number five in your 2016 reboot talk. Can you elaborate on how you've been challenged on the stance during your career? It's interesting how one of your main RPG design pillars might conflict with the views of other team members, narrative designers, cinematic creators, other programmers, etc. And do you find that developing open-ended sandbox RPGs have become much more accepting by people in the game industry over the years? So first off, that's a good question. And I thought I should begin by showing a clip of this talk just to kind of get everyone on the same page about what Lars is referring to, so here it is. So the next uh, problem I've had, um, I have a thing for linearity. Um, I don't like it in my RPG. I don't like it if I play an RPG and my friend plays an RPG and we both have the same experience. And I'm not even talking, you know, even if we made the same character, I like things to be able to done in any order. I like you to be able to go to towns in different order and do quests in different order, um, you know, interrupt NPCs and all that. Um, the big thing I like to tell my designers are games are not movies, and I make them repeat that after me. If you recognize this game or this movie, plus two points, but if you went to see it, minus two points. Um, sorry, Blizzard. Any Blizzard people? Whew. Okay, um, I love WoW, by the way, the game. Um, so what I tell them is um, a, a game isn't like a movie or a book or a play or anything. It's not meant to be linear. It's not meant to unfold like a book or a movie. I mean, if, if that was what, um, you know, a game was, I mean, I, I could see an adventure game or other things, but I said, I kind of hold RPGs to a different standard. I made my character. This game better react to my character and what I do. That's what an R that's like, to me, what's at the core of an RPG. And what I would like to use as an example is I had a scripter on Fallout 1, and he made this area, which if you don't recognize, and I could only find a screenshot where all the raiders were dead. Now, what you just saw, I kept going at that point, that's just a couple minutes I wanted to throw in. I kept going and I explained all the different ways that you could do that quest to rescue Tandy. I've talked about that here on the channel. Um, I've even gone into the dialogues that we put in on Arcanum to support those kind of different things. I talk about nonlinearity in game design and in stories. I will link all of those associated videos that I made below. But this should get everybody at the same speed. This is everyone now understands the context of what I'm talking about. So I think what I was referring to in this talk, and I think what, what Lars is asking about, is very early on, and I'm talking about mid-90s when I was making Fallout, it was very hard to explain the idea of a pure, open-ended game to other people at Interplay. And these were game industry folks. And so many of them are game industry folks with a lot more experience than me. But what we were trying to do in Fallout was a bit different than the other games at, at Interplay. I mean, I've, I've even mentioned Stonekeep has a main character who is predefined and has a name and stats and you has a background story and he's, he's insert, you, you, you basically insert yourself into the story. And that was not what I was trying to do. So I'd try to explain to people, no, 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 you make your own character. The only the only commonality is it's a character coming out of a vault, but you could make a wildly different character and there's your skills and traits and perks and attributes and how you treat people and whether you kill people or talk to them or even not even do talk to them at all or what quests you do and what order you do them. All that factors into what's going on. Explaining this to some of the designers on the team was, some of them got it. We, they played my GURPS campaigns, they got it. Some of them, it was a bit of a bump, you know, and they kept trying to say things like, well, what if the player does this and then I make them do this? I'm like, you never make them do anything. Um, people outside the project really had a rough time with it. Um, running it through QA at first, we were asked for like, can you give us a walkthrough? And we're like, no, it depends. The It depends on what order you want to do things and what kind of character you make and what you've already done. We had, um, 
when the person was trying to make the strategy guide for Fallout, <laughs> I think he pulled his hair out when he kept going, well, what's the right way to do this? I'm like, there is no right way to do it. I've heard, and please comment if this is true, that some game players in some countries didn't like Fallout and some of my later games because there was no right way to play them, that they frequently wanted to know, what am I supposed to do here? How am I supposed to rescue Tandy? And it was hard to explain. There was no correct way to rescue Tandy. You were just supposed to rescue her. And maybe you don't even have to do, you don't even have to do that. But there was no right way to rescue her. And that frustrated some people. It made them angry. In a way, I didn't quite understand because I'd never played tabletops that way. But there are a lot of computer role-playing games out there that expect you to play a certain way. Even down to expecting you to take the good actions and the bad actions lead to early termination or they don't even let you make a lot of things about your character because they want to insert you into a predefined story. And I just had to explain to people that's not what we're doing. Even people towards the end when Fallout was being made and people were taking it home to play and they would call me and go, hey, I'm stuck here. What am I supposed to do? And I'm like, well, what character did you make? What did you do before this? What skills did you spend points on? What traits do you have? What perks did you buy? And sometimes they'd get frustrated and go, just tell me what I'm supposed to do. And I'm like, I'm trying to. But some of the things you could do here may not be available to you because your character can't do it. Um, by the way, I had very similar reactions with people about the player having to be good or not. There was a a mental leap people had to take when I told them the game didn't require you to be good. They meant, oh, it, I should be bad? I'm like, no. In fact, the game will punish you for being bad. Oh, so I should be good? No. You should play how you want to play. And then the game will react to how you're playing and you have to accept the consequences to your decisions. If you act like a jerk, people won't like it. If you kill people, people will come after you. That kind of thing. The game isn't going to make you play one way or the other. And it took some people like, I'd say that one sentence, like, oh, I get it. I love this game. Other people were like, I don't understand. What am I supposed to do? And it just felt like a loop with people. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think that came from what people had experienced before. If you played a tabletop RPG with a good DM that didn't force anything on you, you totally understood open-ended sandbox worlds. But if you had played certain kinds of computer RPGs before Fallout, you were expecting to be told what to do or telegraphed what to do. And that's not what I was doing, of course. So to go to Lars's other question about did things get better? Yes. Things have gotten a lot better. There's a lot more open-ended sandbox reaction-based choice and consequence games out there. But even in modern times... I've had discussions on my most recent games. I've had discussions with people who don't seem to get the concept. I worked with a narrative designer within the last few years who got very angry that their very linear idea could not be forced on the player, leading to discussions that had like him saying, well, once they go in the room, the door shuts and locks and can't be picked and you can't get out the window and we don't let them leave until they do this thing. And I'm like, what if they don't ever do the thing? Then they'll be in the room forever. Wow. I, it was very difficult to explain to someone that that is not the kind of game I'm making. Not that it was a bad idea necessarily, but just that isn't the game we were making. And I found myself having that conversation several times. And it wasn't just with people on the team. There was um, someone above me in the development production line, chain above me, who basically was very upset that work was being done that, in his words, some or even most players would never see. Which I tried to explain to him that that was a necessary you know, result of a nonlinear game that... You know, if somebody played the game with a pacifist playthrough, they're never going to see death animations on a lot of characters. So why are we doing them? If people play the game and decide never to attack animals or always run away from robots or 
you know, never interact with some people. They're never going to see all those dialogues that are written. And we had a producer. I told you, my producer, Eric DeMille, just like to shoot everybody he came across. So dialogues? What dialogues? Interestingly, this spilled over into Companions because originally for The Outer Worlds, I wanted to make Companions more chained in to Choice and Consequence. So I was going to make it so that um, the leadership skill determined, like some Companions had a minimum leadership skill before they'd agree to join you, which meant you could buy it up. But also the number of Companions you could have, I was going to limit it either with leadership or with a associated perk that you had to buy that originally you could have one companion and if you bought a perk you get another one or maybe it was an unlock of one of the leadership skills um, I really wanted to do that and I was basically talked out of it because I was again told this could be we're doing a lot of work on these companions and it would be awful if someone made a character who couldn't experience it so basically I was talked out of doing that with the wasted work explanation and of course even to this day I feel you know what? Having having big consequences to choices player make are good. It makes the game far more replayable, especially when people go online and find out, wait a minute, you know, Pavardi didn't join me because I did this thing? Yes, she didn't like that. Or she left the group because of this? Yes, she hated what you did. That kind of thing I really, I really like. Now, don't get me wrong, things are a lot better now, um, but mainly because a lot of games do it, but still, sometimes trying to add a feature that no one else does is still hard, and I've talked about this, that sometimes when I have an idea, the first pushback I get is, well, what other game does that? And if I can't think of another game that does it, that person doesn't want to do it in the game. And it's led to me to just say, well, you're the same person who asked me about hooks. How are you supposed to have a unique hook if I can't have a feature that hasn't been done in a game? And they didn't have an answer to that. But other people have said, well, I think the reason you aren't seeing it in other games, there's a reason. It must be a bad idea. And I've had to reach out into other genres or other like, well, we haven't seen this in a game, but this movie did it. And suddenly it was a good idea again. So that still happens. And I think the whole thing with nonlinearity is enough other games have done it that not only did I not need to explain it, I don't have to justify its inclusion in games anymore. But I guarantee if you have a unique idea, it will be a bit of an uphill battle for you to get it in because a lot of people think it's not that it's no one's had it, it's that it's a bad idea. So luckily, nonlinearity is no longer in that category. So I hope that answered your question, Mr. Lars Koch 01.